Okay, hi guys, welcome back to part three, part C, if you will, of our time series analysis in Excel. So far, we've smoothed out the data and we've deseasonalized it. This was our original data here, okay? And we identified the seasonal component and therefore deseasonalized the data. Now, what we're going to do is we want to find out the trend component, <clears throat> okay? Because remember, the classical multiplicative model says that yt, which is our original data, equals st times it, which we dealt both with both of these here and here, in essence, times t. t. That's the trend component. And that's what we, the focus of this third part of the video of this series is going to be. Okay. So all these have to come together in order for us to make a proper forecast into the future, into year five. Okay, so let's get with it. So this column here, we're going to call T. T, that's the trend component at time T. And by the way, this subscript, the subscript T here is referring to this column here that we created in, in a very early step right I think it was step two in video in the first part okay so in order to do this we first have to run a simple linear regression okay using the deseasonalized data as our y variable our response right and the t variable as our x okay so in order to do this one way is with the data analysis tool pack okay I'll show you how to install that very quickly but I have tons of videos by the way on all the Excel parts if any of this Excel uh, skills used here are challenging I have separate videos on my channel Jaleer Academy that deal with them in focus okay one video just talks about doing the data analysis tool pack adding it okay doing a simple linear regression, doing average, doing average if, doing VLOOKUP, and all the other functions that I've used so far. Plotting graphs, I got tons of videos on different types of plotting. Okay, so check those out. This video kind of puts things together, but I'll show you very quickly. You go to File, Options, Add-ins, Go. Make sure you check analysis tool pack click OK I already have it so I just click cancel go over to data and it should be here in the data ribbon okay now presuming you have this click on it now scroll down to regression because we want to do a simple linear regression click OK I told you the Y variables are going to be the deseasonalized data so you can highlight them with the title and the X's are going to be the time code variable we added very early on so highlight that with the title and if you highlight the title click labels and that's all we're going to check here one more thing we have to say is where do you want me to throw all this output click here click in there and let's throw it down here so it doesn't conflict with any of these other stuff Okay, so just throw it somewhere way down here. And let's go down and see what we got here. The thing we're most interested in is are the component the coefficients. Okay, so these guys. Let's highlight them right off the bat. So we don't lose them. Okay, that's that's our y intercept and that's our slope. Okay, and these two are what we're gonna use to calculate our uh, trend component all right so once you have this output really in essence what we're looking for are the co coefficients and as we can see here from the p-values both of these and especially most importantly the slope is significantly different than zero if you've taken a stats course you know exactly what I mean here okay so we're justified in in uh, assuming there is a trend component and the visual also shows there's definitely this kind of upward trend. It's not a flat line, in other words. Okay, so 
let's get the trend component. So equals the intercept, hit F4 to lock, plus the slope, hit F4 to lock, times the time code for that row. That was in cell A4, okay? I'm over here, all right? That's our X that we're plugging in. Hit enter and drag this all the way down. And let's get rid of some decimals, okay? So this is the trend component in the classical multiplicative model. All right, so if, if you've understood what I've said so far, we're almost there. We're about to make predictions, okay? And in order to make predictions, you have to combine all the components that you separated. In other words, we separated S, we separated T, and we got rid of I in essence, right? And we're going to put them all back together by multiplying them together, okay? And essentially it's this times this will go here, right? This times this. So let, you could call this prediction or forecast, if you will. Okay, so here we go. Equals, so this is easy. The trend component times, I mean, sorry, the seasonal component times the trend component. And let's drag this down all the way. All right. So we we're able to forecast, but forecasting kind of implies going into the future. And all we've done so far is really predict, show what our work from here forward, right? All this work that we did in these two videos, right, was from here forward. And we added this column too, and we created this seasonal indexes over here, and we have the output from the simple linear regression down here. All this work was to get to this column, and all we really got is predictions, like 4.89, for periods that we already have the actual data for, right? This is the historical data that we already know. We already know what actually happened in year one, quarter one. 4,800 uh, cars were sold. And we already know what happened in year four, quarter four. 8.4 uh, or 8,400 cars were sold. So the model this at this point just shows how well the work we did is at predicting what the actual data is. More interesting is to go into the future. Okay? And to go into the future, we have to just make some adjustments. First of all, we have to extend some of these columns. So let me actually, at this point, highlight all this. We're going to go, let's project one year into the future. So that means year five, quarter one, two, three, and four. It makes sense to project one year. It doesn't make sense to project too far ahead, right? Most of the times we don't try to project too far ahead because of a lot of unforeseen. So let's just go one year ahead. So we have to, let's actually first change the color here. Highlight this uh, a nice color so it's clear that this green stuff over here is going to be forecasted data. Whereas everything up here was based on what's already happened, historical data. Okay, so let's just fill in some of these cells. Year five, quarter one, two, three, four. Let's extend this time period down. Fill without formatting. 17, 18, 19, 20. Okay. Other columns that we need to pull down actually already did. Right? We need the seasonal components. These came from this chart over here. Okay. So 
0.93 because it's quarter one, quarter one seasonal component, right? And just another example, quarter four seasonal component, 1.14. Okay, so you need to drag that down, and we also need to drag down this, the trend component. Alright, so presuming you've dragged the, the ST, the seasonal component, and the trend component down, the others are unnecessary because the others, these guys, were kind of just conduits or steps in order to get to the point, which was S and T. So we really only need the cream and not any of the milk, if you will. <laughs> okay so let's now make a forecast so this was easy too you could just drag this down because all this did was multiply this cell by this cell all right and that's already what we have in this formula that I'm dragging down so here are the forecasts for year five quarters one two three and four so this is going into the future now everything under this line I'm drawing right and the cre what we wanted to get to at the very beginning of video one we started with the historical data for four years of car sales measured quarterly and we wanted to be able to forecast into year five and these numbers right here that I'm circling over and over was what we wanted to get to okay we want to know what's gonna happen next year we don't know it hasn't happened yet and now we have an idea of what's gonna happen okay so now let's plot this forecast column right on top of this plot so that we can see visually how well these guys uh, the forecasts, the predicted and forecast numbers match or flow with our our actual data, which is in blue. Okay, so maybe we'll do this forecast in green. So click on the plot. So we've done this already twice. Design, select data, add. We're going to add a new series. The name of this series is going to be let me actually move my plot so I can get to my data okay select data add the name is going to be forecast the values more importantly are going to be these guys and I'm gonna go not only to there but into year five as well click OK all right and if I move this aside you see that the green line kind of really tightly matches the actual line. The green line is the forecast. The blue line was the historical data that we actually know. And you see it really tightly matches it. Okay. And then at year four, quarter four, when our blue line ends, we enter into the future. And you can see that the general flow is really well project it really well forecast if you were to just step back and and look at it it looks right okay and there's a lot of mathematics that we obviously did in order to get this little bit of extra curve into the future okay and that was all the work that we did but one thing's missing let's get this year five and quarter one two three four in the right place okay to do that, edit the horizontal axis and just re-highlight and this time include year five. Okay, click OK. Let's just make this bigger because we're almost done. We just want to take a look at this and talk about it. So this plot with three series or three lines drawn on top of it represents visually all the work that we did in these three videos okay and as you can see the actual data which is the sales for the four years and the forecast and predicted values for 
the four years are really well uh, approximated okay so our predictions really tightly follow the um, actual values okay but when we get to year four we're out of actual values <clears throat> and we want to go into quarter one of year five which is next quarter into the future and if you were to kind of uh, in the beginning draw this curve and I kind of close your eyes at some point here and continue let your hand continue to go where it wants to you would almost end up doing something like this right and in essence all the work we did here right mathematically did what your hand would have done all right except you have something some uh, concrete proof to go back on to fall back on and justify your forecast into the future all right so I hope this was helpful uh, it's, it's a, this was a three-part video on time series data which included a, quite a bit of theory concepts ideas and actual actual Excel uh, formulas and doing it creating this and getting to the final result okay practice application okay so I hope this was helpful uh, if if you like this video be sure to go to my channel, subscribe, and check out my other tutorial videos, both on statistics, subject matter, Excel specifically, Access, PowerPoint, and uh, other programs, uh, and just some general math videos as well. So, once again, thanks for watching, and come back soon.